do you need to pay for the phone call or SMS message option offered by the Smart Life subscription service to get alarm notifications? The answer is no, you do not need to pay for this service. Matter of fact, this service does not work with the OSI alarm systems. The OSI alarm system sends notifications through your system notifications on your smartphone or tablet. As long as you have a data plan, you will get alarm notifications for free. Okay, so I'm back with the OSI Wi-Fi wireless alarm system. I'm going to unbox this and then we're going to show you how to quickly set it up. So first of all, when you open the box, you're going to see the manual. Now, this is more of a technical guide, so I wouldn't recommend using this to learn how to set up. Um, think of this as more of learning uh, what all the button descriptions are and the in-depth features if you want to go beyond the basic usage of the system. So let's put that aside. Okay, so on the top is the display. Uh, this is a 4.3 inch color display, IPS display. So very good colors and excellent viewing angle. Um, underneath you see RFID, that stands for radio frequency ID. So you got those tags on the keychain that you use um, to disarm and arm the system. It's the same uh, idea as the hotel keys that you have. Those are RFID. And then above the RFID code, it says SOS. That's the panic button. So as soon as you press that, it'll sound the alarm. Or if you have a SIM card inside, uh, then it'll automatically call the preset numbers and your voice message that you've programmed in there. And when you turn it around, uh, you see two covers. One is the main cover, which you just slide down. That comes off. And then above, that's uh, what's called a built-in tamper switch. Uh, really... When you turn the internal power on, you do need this on or this alarm will sound off. So the way it works is that the tamper switch is simply screwed onto the wall. And then you place the OSI alarm panel onto that tamper switch until it clicks into place. If someone breaks into the house, try to rip it off. Well, once the screws are off of here, then uh, the circuit is broken and the alarm begins to sound now on the inside are four main inputs, two of which are gonna be the most important for most of you. Uh, one is the power, that's the five volt USB power cord plugged into here. Uh, on this side here is the wired siren jack. That is where your siren plugs into. And then right over here, this black area here pops open. That is where your SIM card goes in. So when the trigger goes off, it'll automatically dial the phone numbers you programmed and play the message. Um, also, uh, at the bottom here is the wired defense zone socket. That is for a whole new feature uh, that we can go into in another video. So we don't need to talk about that because right now we just want to do quick setup. Okay, and now we're going to go through the rest of the accessories that come in this box, starting with uh, one 5 volt USB power cable right here, one PIR sensor, and a mount. One window slash door sensor and uh, the 3M backing that just sticks onto the door there or the window. Uh, of course, because this comes with one, uh, you're using this for the door. I can't see anyone just not wanting to use this uh, for the door and only using it for the window. So you're going to use this for the door. If you want an additional one for your window, um, you can go on the online store. And then you have two remotes. And I don't think most of you are going to use the remotes, um, mainly because everyone already has the remotes for their cars, so you probably don't want too much clunkiness going on in your pockets, as well as two RFID tags, which I showed you. Right where it says RFID on the system, you just swipe across it, and it'll automatically arm and disarm the system. And then we have a wired horn. This is only about two inches in diameter. It's loud enough for an apartment. Um, it has a four foot wire and this inserts into the back of the unit and the horn itself attaches to the wall with either two screws or you can use a 3M backing. Now, if you don't like the wired look and you want more of a cleaner look, or you just want an additional siren because maybe, um, you want another siren in another room so you can hear it better. We do sell, uh, an additional accessory. It's a wireless strobe siren. So it's louder. It strobes light. And it can be plugged anywhere where there's an electrical outlet. Um, I highly recommend getting this. 
Uh, it's definitely a much more cleaner look and it is louder. So if you want this, it's available at our store. And then lastly, we have four screws. Uh, two of them are for the mount for the PIR motion sensor and two of them are to mount the display unit onto the wall. Well, that's everything that comes included with the system. Next up, I'm going to show you how to very quickly and easily set up the alarm system in just a matter of minutes. So are you guys ready to set up? Let's go. Okay, so now I'm first going to show you how to do the initial setup using the touchscreen display and then of course connect to the Smart Life app so we can change settings, receive push notifications and arm and disarm the system. Now you should have five pieces sitting here. Your power, your display, your motion sensor, your horn and your window slash door sensor. Now we're going to flip this over and take off the cover. And we are going to plug this in. Now I have a outlet uh, off screen here, so I'm gonna plug that in. And then we're gonna take this and plug this end into the back here, just like this. And we're gonna feed this through here easily. There. Now, before I cover this, there is a switch right here I want to show you. Uh, if I put up close, you'll see on and off. That is the internal lithium backup battery. So we do not need to turn that on until we're finished the complete setup. So let's cover this back up. And when we flip this over, you'll see that it is now ready for setup. Okay, so now that the screen's on, I'm going to show you what everything means. This here with the bars is just showing you have no SIM card installed, which we don't need. Uh, this is showing we haven't connected the Wi-Fi yet, which we will do later. This is your battery status, of course your time. When these two are green, that's a good thing. You want to see that when you're doing your initial setup. Now, the first button is your arm and disarm log button. Now, when you click uh, the arm button, for example, System armed. it'll change color. And then when you disarm it, System disarmed. Goes back to green. Now, again, this is a log, so when you open it, it'll show you two actions that I did. Uh, the last one is what's going to show first. So if I go back up, it's going to show you that I armed it first, and that's one of two, and it shows you the date and time. And then if I go down, it shows you the second action I did and the date, and it shows you that I disarmed it. So we could delete all that. All I do is click the X button. I'll say delete all, and we're going to say yes, and then we'll go back, and we'll go back again. And over here is your alarm log button. So anytime your sensors are triggered, it's going to show you a log. So you'll just go in the exact same way, and it'll show you the time and what was triggered, etc. So we'll go back, and that's that. So this is the arm button. You're going to press this when you go away. And this is your stay arm button. That's what you're going to press when you're at home. So when you're sleeping and you want to feel protected, you'll click on this. And this is your menu button. This is the only button we're going to need to go into to do our initial setup. The initial setup consists of these steps. The first step is to set the date and time. The second step is to create a user and system passcode so you can unlock the touchscreen display to make setting changes and arm and disarm the system. The third step is to connect your alarm system to your Wi-Fi network. The fourth step would be to add the remote and the RFID tags. The next step would be to add the motion and contact sensors. The sensors may or may have already been added and pre-configured. I'll show you how to check for that later on. And lastly, if you purchase the 14-piece kit, you will need to add the wireless strobe siren. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is set the date and the time. And we're going to do that by clicking on Menu. Then we're going to click on Timer. Then we're going to click on Date and Time. Then we're going to adjust this. So we're going to go, it's 2020. It's December the 1st. And it is... 309. Oh, there, that's perfect. So once we're happy with that, we click the check mark and then we go back. So now we're at the timer screen. We're going to go back one more time and we are now at the main menu. And now we have completed setting the date and time. Now I'm going to show you how to create a user passcode and a system passcode and explain what the difference is between the two.
Now, before we do that, we have to turn the keypad lock on. And the keypad lock, once turned on, is telling the system to prompt you to enter a password in order to arm and disarm the system, as well as enter the control panel. So let's turn that on right now. So we're gonna go into settings, and then we're gonna go into switch, and then we're gonna click on keypad lock, and it says off. So we're gonna turn that on by selecting here. It'll turn green, so then just press the check mark to confirm. It says setting okay, everything is good. Takes us back. Now all I do is go back one more, and we are at the settings page. So here is where we can create a password. So let's select password. Here you will see two different buttons, system and user. This means you can have two different passcodes. These are both separate passcodes which you can program. If you jumped into the section of the video because your system is locked when you first plugged in the display, then please try using these two default passcodes. There's a system default passcode, which is number 6666, and a default user passcode, which is 1234. If you're still having issues unlocking the system, please visit the contact page at www.osigodirect.com and select Create a Support Ticket, and one of our support agents will help you with your issue. Okay, now back to the system and user passcode. The system passcode acts like an administrator passcode with a security feature where you have control over changing both your system passcode and the user passcode. But anyone who unlocks the display using just the user passcode cannot change the system passcode. This feature was especially created due to demand for those renting rooms in their house or Airbnb property owners who wanted their guests to have a separate passcode without being able to change the system passcode. So the system passcode should be kept secretly and only used by the business or homeowner. Please note, always keep your system password in a safe place because if you forget this passcode, you'll need to create a support ticket at osigodirect.com as you'll need our help to unlock the system for you. As far as the user passcode is concerned, it should be different from your system passcode. You would typically give this user passcode to your kids, guests, roommates, or Airbnb renters, for example, where you may need to change the user passcode when they move out or if you need to cut off access to your property for any specific reason. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to change the user and system passcodes. Select user to change the user passcode and select system to change the system passcode. Again, the system passcode would be the same as calling it an administrator passcode or a master passcode, for example. So for now, let's select system. Now press the delete button to delete the old passcode. Then enter the new passcode. Then select the check mark to confirm. And that's it. To change the user passcode, just repeat the exact same steps. Also, keep in mind that through the Smart Life app, you can share the system with unlimited users. This will give them access to arm and disarm the system through the Smart Life app. You can also remove these users at any time. Please note, whoever you decide to share the system with will have to set up an account on the Smart Life app as well. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the 4G model OSI smart alarm system to your Wi-Fi network. Before we start, ensure that you have your smartphone and OSI alarm system in front of you. At this point, you should have already installed Smart Life on your phone and made an account. Also, please ensure that your Bluetooth is turned on. Due to the Smart Life app updating periodically, these steps may change slightly over time. First, open the Smart Life app. Then select Add Device. This blue button only appears if this is the first time adding a device to the Smart Life app. If you already have other devices installed in the Smart Life app, then you'll just press the plus icon on the top right corner and then select Add Device. Then select the Add button. Select your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and enter your password. Please note that if you have a smart modem, it should auto-populate the correct Wi-Fi network. So if it does, just enter your password. Then select next. You will then see the screen showing alarm host being added. This can take anywhere between 15 seconds to one minute. When you see that the device has been added successfully, you can now select done. 
You can now perform a quick test to confirm that your smartphone or tablet is connected to your OSI alarm panel. Press the disarm button on the app and you should automatically hear the alarm panel say system disarmed. System disarmed. And that's it. Your OSI alarm system is now connected to your Wi-Fi network and appears on your Smart Life app. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the remotes to the OSI alarm system using the Smart Life app. Please make sure you have at least one remote with you and be situated close to the OSI alarm system. Now let's open the Smart Life app, then select the OSI alarm device. Then select accessories. Once opened, it will automatically default to the remote tab, which is where you want to be. Now let's select the plus icon on the top right. You will have approximately 25 seconds to connect the remote. So let's take one of the remotes and press any button to connect it to the Smart Life app. It now says device add success. So let's press confirm. You can now see the remote is now listed under the remotes tab. If you want to rename the remote, just select it. Then select sub device name. I'll enter my name. Once done, press save. Now you can press confirm and you will now see the new name for the remote. Now let's do a test. Let's press the back button. Now on the remote, let's press the arm at home button on the bottom left side. System armed. Both the alarm display and the app should show as armed. So let's disarm the alarm system by pressing the button with the unlock icon. System disarmed. And now as you can see, the alarm system is now disarmed. Just repeat the steps to connect the other remote and that's it. Now I'm going to show you how to program the RFID tags that come with the OSI alarm system. The RFID tags attach to your keychain that you carry around with you. It's a simple way of arming and disarming the alarm system without having to enter the passcode. So before exiting or entering the house, all you need to do is wave the RFID tag close to the OSI logo located on the bottom left side of the alarm display. The alarm system comes with two RFID tags, but you can order more if you wish, and there's no limit as to how many RFID tags you can use with this alarm system. Programming the RFID tags only takes a few seconds. Just follow these steps and ensure you have the RFID tags in your hand at this point. On the display, select Menu. Then select Parts. Select RFID. Then select the plus icon located on the bottom right corner to add a new RFID tag. It will go to a new screen with a 20 second countdown. Hold the RFID tag close to the OSI logo located on the bottom left corner until you see a pop-up message on the screen that says, Learning OK. And that's it, you've now programmed your RFID tag. So now let's do a quick test. Hold the RFID tag at least one inch away from the OSI logo and it should arm the alarm system. Then do it again a second time and it should now disarm the alarm system. Repeat these steps for every additional RFID tag. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the contact sensors to the OSI alarm system. The two sensors that come included with the OSI mini alarm system should already be pre-configured, meaning they should already show connected to the OSI alarm system set with the recommended settings. To confirm that the sensors are already connected, just open up the Smart Life app. Select the OSI alarm device. Then select accessories. Then select the detector tab. Under the tab detectors, you may see the words EOL detectors. This cannot be deleted, so please ignore this. Also, an alarm socket tab has now been added under the accessories page. This tab is used for advanced alarm technicians, so you can also ignore this as well. Detector is where all the connected sensors are listed. If you see two sensors listed here, you should see the first one listed here with the name door sensor and the second one with the name motion sensor. These will already be set up with the recommended settings. You could change the name of the sensor to whatever you'd like, such as back door, front door, living room motion, or kitchen motion, for example. Whatever you name the sensor here is the name that will show up on the notification when your alarm is triggered. 
if there are no sensors connected and the detectors page looks like this, or you want to add more additional sensors, please follow along. Before we start, I want to mention a few important things. Firstly, if you're adding sensors for the first time, we recommend connecting door slash window sensors first. Secondly, if you already have active sensors installed and are adding new sensors, please turn off all motion PIR sensors first. Motion PIR sensors give off a constant signal, therefore it'll confuse the OSI alarm system when adding new sensors. Okay, let's begin adding the door sensor. Right now, the detector tab should be selected. On the back of the contact sensor, move the switch to the on position. Please ensure both sides of the sensor are together and the arrows on the sides of the sensors are aligned. If you do not do this before the next step, you will end up having open door warning issues. Also, if the contact sensor is already installed on the window or door, then just make sure the door or window is closed so both sides of the sensor are together. Now press the plus icon on the top right corner. The OSI alarm system is now in pairing mode and the timer has now started. Now pull both sides of the sensor apart. Again, if the sensor is installed on a door or window, just open it so that both sides of the sensor are separated. It says device add success. So select confirm. Now you can see that the door sensor has been added. The default name is detector zero. If you rather change the name to something else, such as front door, I'll show you how to do that. Select the sensor name detector zero. Select sub device name. Then enter the name you want to call the sensor. I'm going to call it front door. Select save. Now select device type. Because we're using this as a door sensor, we will select door alarm. If you're going to install this on the window, you would select window alarm. This makes it easier to distinguish where the sensor is located when receiving notifications, when the alarm is triggered, or if a door or window is open. So let's select door alarm, press confirm. Now select zone attribute. Zone attribute is the customized operation given to each sensor. For any window or door sensor, the recommended setting is stay arm active. This setting will make the sensor active when you arm the system by pressing away, such as when you're leaving the house, or when you arm the system by pressing home, such as when you're going to bed. Stay arm active is selected now, so press confirm. Then press save. It says save success, so press confirm. The door sensor is now connected with the correct settings. Okay, let's do a quick test to make sure the sensor is working. So let's press the back button. Now, before we arm the system, make sure that both sides of the sensor are close together. Now let's arm the system and press home. System arm. Now that the system's armed, let's pull both sides of the sensor apart. Okay, now that we know that it works, press the alarm remove button, which will disarm it. And that's it. The door sensor is connected and working. And now I'm gonna show you how to connect the motion sensor. If you currently have any active motion sensors already installed, please ensure to turn them off before adding the new sensors. So let's begin. First, we need to get to the detectors tab. So let's press accessories and then press detectors. Turn the switch on the back of the motion sensor to the on position. Then on the Smart Life app, press the plus icon. The OSI alarm system is now in pairing mode and the timer has now started. It says device add success. So select confirm. Now you can see the motion sensor has now been added. The default name is detector one. But again, when the motion sensor gets triggered and sends a notification to your smartphone or tablet, we'd rather see a familiar name such as living room motion. So let's change that. Select the sensor detector one. Select sub device name, then enter the name you want to call the sensors. I will call this living room PIR. Select save. Now select device type. I will be installing this motion sensor in the living room as most of you will be. So let's select living room alarm. Press confirm. Now let's select zone attribute. For any motion sensor, the recommended setting is out arm active. This setting will make the sensor active only when you arm the system by pressing away when you leave the house. The sensor will not be active when you arm the system by pressing the home button. This allows you to walk freely in the middle of the night to get a glass of water, for example, without triggering the motion sensor. Out arm active is selected. Now let's press confirm. 
Then press save. It says save success, so press confirm. The motion sensor is now connected with the correct settings. Okay, now let's do a quick test to make sure the sensor is working. So let's press the back button. Now let's arm the system and press away. System armed. And then we'll just simply wave our hand over the motion sensor. Okay, now that we know that it works, press the alarm remove button, which will disarm it. And there we go, the motion sensor is now working. And now I'm going to show you how to install the contact sensor. The sensor is made up of two parts, the sensor side, which is the large piece, and the magnet side, which is the smaller piece. The first thing we're going to do is peel off the backing off the 3M tape and then apply it to the magnet side. Next, I'll apply it to the sensor. Now the way these are installed is that one side sticks onto the frame of the door and the other side sticks onto the actual door itself. For aesthetic reasons, the smaller side will look better on the door, but depending on the type of frame you have, the smaller side may fit better on the frame instead. So you can place either side of the sensor on the door or the frame. Before installing the sensor, here are a few tips you should pay close attention to which will help avoid any connection problems or reading errors. Number one. Install these near the top of the door as this will help to avoid the sensor from being accidentally torn off by someone or something. Also, because the tab to open the sensor cover is at the bottom, having the sensor placed higher will make it easier for you when you need to replace the battery in the future. Number two, ensure the arrows on both the sensor side and the magnet side are aligned perfectly. Number three, make sure both sides of the sensor are less than one quarter inch apart. And number four, if you have an uneven door frame, you can strategically layer additional double-sided 3M tape or corrugated plastic until both sides of the sensors are perfectly flat, as you can see here. Once you've decided where you want to install the sensor, remove the 3M backing off one side of the sensor. I'll do the sensor side first, which is the large side. Then apply it to the door or the frame whichever side works best for you. In this situation, as you can see here, the door frame is too uneven and does not allow room for the large side. Place it about a few millimeters from the edge. Then we'll remove the backing off the magnet side. And as you can see here, there's just enough room for it to fit on the frame. Again, make sure that the arrow on the magnet side aligns with the arrow on the sensor side. Now let's do a test and open the door. As soon as you open the door, a red light should turn on for a few seconds. As you can see, everything works perfectly. To install the sensor on a window, it's done exactly the same as installing on the door. However, many windows are designed to open differently, so just keep in mind that as long as both sides of the sensor are aligned perfectly, then the sensor will work. Here's an example of a sensor being installed on a typical basement window. If you have no room to install the sensors flat and side by side due to how the window and door is configured with the frame, here are a few examples of other configurations you can use. If using these configurations, please be sure the arrows are aligned together and the magnet side is less than a half an inch apart from the sensor side. In most cases, the contact sensor should work normally on the window or patio door as long as it's installed correctly. If for any reason the sensor is not working on your window or patio door, there is a good chance that the metal or aluminum frame is blocking the signal to the alarm panel. In most cases, we recommend purchasing the OSI signal repeater. The OSI signal repeater will not only fix this issue, but it can also help the signal go through barriers and walls including some made out of concrete, depending on the thickness. It also allows for the contact sensor to be installed at much farther distances on your property, including detached garages or sheds. You now know how to install the contact sensor on your window or your door. Now I'm going to show you how to install the PIR motion sensor. Before we start, we'll need a pencil, hammer, stool, ladder, and Phillips head screwdriver or drill. Now I'm going to show you how to install the PIR motion sensor. PIR stands for Passive Infrared, which detects infrared energy. When a person passes by a motion sensor, it will trigger the sensor from detecting a change in temperature from the heat of your body. This is why the placement of the motion sensor is so important. So before I show you how to install it, here are six very important placement tips to help you get the best possible use out of your motion sensor. Number one, place your motion sensor approximately seven to eight feet high on the wall to get the best possible coverage. 
but avoid placing over large pieces of furniture, such as a high bookshelf, which will limit its range. Number two, keep the motion sensor approximately 10 to 15 feet away from heat sources, such as radiators, heating vents, and direct sunlight from sunny windows. Number three, corners are the most ideal locations because you can position them to cover the most area. Number four, mount the motion sensor so it's facing towards the entrance. This ensures that there's no way for a person to hide in any blind spots, which can happen if installed the opposite way, as you can see from this image. This is especially important if you only have one motion sensor. Number five, point the motion sensor towards choke points. A choke point is an area which a person must pass through to get to any place in your home, such as doorways, stairwells, or a hallway. For example, if an intruder breaks into this home, they must pass through the hallway to get to every important area of the home, including the stairwell to get to the second floor. Number six, avoid mounting the motion sensor where it's facing moving objects such as ceiling fans or a curtain that may blow in the wind from an open window, as this can trigger the motion sensor. Number seven, if you have any pets, you most likely do not have to worry about a small dog from triggering the motion sensor. However, large pets will. So for medium dogs, we recommend moving the angle of your motion sensor upwards or straight as you see in this photo. For larger pets, we recommend turning the motion sensor upside down. This should most likely fix your issue. Once you've repositioned the motion sensor, arm the alarm system and call your pet from across the room where the motion sensor is installed. Keep doing this test and repositioning the motion sensor until you found the sweet spot. Move cat trees and other types of objects that make it easier for your cat to climb into the motion sensor range of view. Now that you know the best placement for your motion sensor, I'm now going to show you how to quickly install it. First, take the surface mount and slide it upwards into the slot on the back of the motion sensor. Next, place the surface mount flat on the wall where you want to install it. Then, while holding the mount firmly against the wall, pull the motion sensor in an upwards position so that it comes off completely. Mark the two screw holes with a pencil and remove the mount. Next, drill two pilot holes using a drill bit that's slightly smaller in diameter than the included wall anchors. Place the wall anchors in the pilot holes and hammer them in until they're flush with the wall. Then using a Phillips head drill bit or Phillips head screwdriver, screw the mount into those anchors. And lastly, slide the motion sensor over the surface mount in a downwards position until it locks in place. You now know how to install the motion sensor. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to connect the OSI wireless strobe siren in just a few steps. It's only gonna take me a minute to show you. So first click on menu, then you're gonna press parts right here. And now don't press this yet, but we're gonna to need to know where it is. It says siren learn, it looks like a picture of a siren. We're gonna be pressing that once we put the siren in pairing mode. So let's pick up the siren and let's put the, click the off to on. So it flashes and you hear a beep you know what's on. So now there's the set button. Now we're not gonna press it yet, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be holding it down. And when we hold it down, it's gonna beep three times, but we're gonna let go of the set button after the second beep, not the third beep. And when we do, this is gonna strobe rapidly for five seconds. And within that five seconds, we have to press the siren learn button. So when we do that, then it'll be finished. So you ready? So we're gonna take the set button, which you see over here, we're gonna hold it down for two beeps, right? Here we go. One, two, let go. Now it's strobing rapidly. You're gonna hit the siren learn button. It beeps and now it is done. Now to check to see if it is connected, we're gonna hold down the SOS panic button and that should uh, make the uh, strobe siren go off. Here we go. One, two, there we go. There you have it. I'm gonna turn this off. And there you go. The uh, wireless strobe siren is now connected. Now have the sides of the grooves facing the wall and place it on the location where you want to install it. So then mark it with a pencil. Now drill two holes where you mark the wall. Make sure the drill bit is smaller than the anchor. Then hammer the wall anchors into the wall. 
Then with the groove side on the surface mount facing the wall, screw in the mount. Then place the siren over the surface mount until it slides in and give it a quick clockwise turn until it locks in place. If you need to recharge the siren, just give it a counterclockwise turn and pull it out. In this next section, I'm going to show you some troubleshooting steps for the most common issues. So the open door warning won't go away when you close the door. The main reason this happens is usually a mistake during the syncing process of the contact sensor to the OSI alarm panel. To fix this issue, please follow these steps. Step 1. Delete the sensor you're having issues with. From the alarm display, navigate to Menu, then Parts, then Detector. Select the trash can beside the sensor you're having the issue with and select the check mark to confirm. Step two, now let's re-add the sensor using the Smart Life app. Before adding the contact sensor, please ensure that any motion sensors nearby are turned off. And don't forget to turn it back on once we've added the contact sensor. Okay, let's begin adding the door sensor. Right now, the detector tab should be selected. On the back of the contact sensor, move the switch to the on position. Please ensure both sides of the sensor are together and the arrows on the sides of the sensors are aligned. If you do not do this before the next step, you will end up having open door warning issues. Also, if the contact sensor is already installed on the window or door, then just make sure the door or window is closed so both sides of the sensor are together. Now press the plus icon on the top right corner. The OSI alarm system is now in pairing mode and the timer has now started. Now pull both sides of the sensor apart. Again, if the sensor is installed on a door or window, just open it so that both sides of the sensor are separated. It says device add success. So select confirm. Now you can see that the door sensor has been added. You can now change the name of the sensor, device type, and the zone attribute. Save and then test to see if it works. Your alarm system should no longer have the open door warning issues. So when you close the door, the red open door warning should disappear. If you're not getting Smart Life system notifications to your phone, it typically means you just need to make a few setting changes within the Smart Life app. So please follow these steps. First, open the Smart Life app and press me on the bottom right corner of your screen. Then press the settings button on the top right of the screen. Now select app notification. If you see this exact screen where you see the title alarm with the do not disturb schedule setting, it means that you have the old version. Although in the Smart Life app, if you go into about, it may say that you have the updated version, but I can assure you it is not. So all you need to do is open your app store, whether it be Google Play or the app store. Now search for Smart Life. Select update. Once it's done downloading and installing, select open. Then it will open the Smart Life app once again. You'll need to press me on the bottom right side of the screen again, and then press the settings button on the top right side of the screen. Now select app notification. You will now see set device alarm mode with three different options. These three options are system notification, phone call, and SMS message. Please make sure that the system notification is turned on. System notifications are events that are displayed on your phone at the top of the screen, as well as in your notifications panel, the same way as your phone's alarm clock, messenger, or other apps would. To enable system notifications, select it, then press the enable system notifications button, and then press the back button. Then make sure that phone call and SMS message are both turned off. These paid subscription options do not work with the OSI alarm system. To use the phone call or SMS message options, a SIM card with a mobile cellular plan from your cell provider is required. But most people are fine with just using system notifications. So if these options are turned on, then select phone call, then turn off the button where it says notify by phone call, and press the back button. Then select SMS message, turn off the button that says notify by SMS message, and then press the back button. Now make sure the buttons labeled home and bulletin are both turned on. That's it, you should now get Smart Life system notifications to your phone or tablet. 
If you're encountering any issues with your alarm system, such as the alarm triggering by itself, arming and disarming by itself, white screen issue, screen or keypad lag issues, or having trouble pairing the sensor or wireless siren, then a full reset, which includes initializing and power cycling the OSI alarm display, will in most cases fix these issues. Keep in mind that after initialization, you'll need to re-add the sensors and wireless strobe siren if you have one. Okay, first I'll show you how to initialize the system, which must be done from the alarm panel. Select Menu, select Settings, then select Initialization. You'll see a message that says all accessories and parameters will be deleted. So as I said before, you will need to re-add the sensors and strobe siren if you have one. However, your Wi-Fi will not be reset, so you won't have to worry about connecting to Wi-Fi again. Now you can press the check mark to confirm that you want to initialize the system. Once initialization is complete, the system will then restart and the welcome screen will show. And now you will see the menu. Now that we initialized the system, we can now do a power cycle. Power cycling can clear any residual errors that may be left on the software and hardware by refreshing the RAM or internal memory. So to power cycle, the first thing you need to do is unplug the power from the electrical outlet. Then flip over the alarm display and remove the back panel. Now on the top left side of the USB mini port, you'll see a switch. This turns the backup battery on and off. Right now we want to switch it off. So move the backup battery to the off position. Then wait about one minute. Then turn the backup battery switch to the on position. Place the back panel cover back on. Then plug the power adapter back into the wall. And that's it. This should have fixed all the issues that I've mentioned before. If you're still encountering issues, please don't hesitate to contact OSI Go Direct. If your OSI alarm display has no power, first check to see if the electrical outlet which the adapter is plugged into has power. Also ensure the USB mini cable is properly seated into the USB mini port in the back of the display panel. If the OSI alarm panel still has no power, the power adapter may possibly be damaged or defective. In order to do a test as well as resolve this issue, replace the OSI power adapter with your smartphone adapter. Smartphone adapters are typically 5 volt 2 amp, the same specs required for your OSI 4G alarm display. Please check the specifications printed on the adapter first. If the alarm display works after using the smartphone adapter and your OSI alarm system is still under one year warranty, please contact OSI Go Direct to have your power adapter replaced. If your warranty has passed, you can purchase any brand 5 volt 2 amp power adapter at Amazon, for example, for a very low cost. Also, remember to turn the backup battery switch to the on position after you've plugged in your new adapter. If you've tried all of these steps and the OSI alarm display still has no power, please contact OSI Go Direct for further assistance. If your OSI alarm panel is not fully charging after being plugged in for over three hours and the battery icon on the top right side of the display panel still shows as charging or even an empty red battery icon, then it's most likely because the OSI alarm panel is not getting sufficient power to charge the backup battery. First, ensure that the backup battery switch is set to the on position and check that the electrical outlet the adapter is plugged into has power. Also ensure that the USB mini cable is properly seated into the USB mini port on the back of the alarm panel. If the OSI alarm panel still has charging issues, then check that the power supply adapter specifications says 5 volt 2 amp and not 5 volt 1 amp. The power specifications are printed directly on the adapter. If the power adapter does in fact say 5 volt 1 amp, then this is most likely the cause of the issue because a 5 volt 1 amp power adapter won't be able to supply sufficient power to the alarm panel. So to do a test, try replacing the OSI power adapter with your smartphone adapter. Smartphone adapters are typically 5 volt 2 amp, the same specs required for your OSI 4G alarm display. If the alarm display is fully charged after being plugged in for over three hours using your smartphone adapter and your OSI alarm system is still under one year warranty, please contact OSI Go Direct to have your power adapter replaced. If your warranty has passed, you can purchase any brand 5 volt 2 amp power adapter at Amazon, for example, for a very low cost. 
Now, if your alarm display is plugged in for over three hours using your smartphone adapter, but the battery still has charging issues or is showing a red empty battery icon on the top right corner of the alarm display, then the internal backup battery may need replacing. If your product is no longer under one year warranty, you can purchase a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery model 523450 from Amazon for as low as $19. If it's still under one year warranty, please contact OSI Go Direct. In most cases, the contact sensor should work normally on the window or patio door as long as it's installed correctly. If for any reason the sensor is not working on your window or patio door, there is a good chance that the metal or aluminum frame is blocking the signal to the alarm panel. In most cases, we recommend purchasing the OSI signal repeater. The OSI signal repeater will not only fix this issue, but it can also help the signal go through barriers and walls, including some made out of concrete, depending on the thickness. It also allows for the contact sensor to be installed at much farther distances on your property, including detached garages or sheds. If the red light on your contact sensor on your door or window is constantly flashing and not working properly with the alarm system, it means that the battery needs replacing. You will need one 3 volt lithium coin battery, model 2450. These can be purchased at Amazon for approximately $5 to $7. To replace the battery, please follow these steps. Now I'm going to replace the battery really quickly here. We've got our battery, the door sensor, and then the flathead screwdriver. So we're going to lift this up and underneath you're going to see a little hole. So you're going to take your flathead screwdriver and in between you can see a little thing that kind of pops out. If you squeeze in between there, it kind of pops out a little bit. So just put a little bit of pressure in there and then twist it. Give it a little twist, just like that, see? It opens really easy. So then just with your fingers, you can just pry it open. Don't worry, it's not going to break. So put that down and inside the housing you see a circuit board with the battery but the battery you cannot access because this is actually metal that uh, the um, battery is seated in between so we're just going to pop this out so right here you'll see a little place where you can stick that in and just give it a tiny little pressure and pry it open and that circuit board comes out really easy now inside you see it has a notch on one side and it's open on the other. So from the notch side, we're just gonna push uh, the battery out with the uh, same uh, flat hitch gear. So just push it out like that, see? There you go. So now we'll put the new battery in and it's plus side facing upwards. So the plus side facing up and then you just stick it in there nice and tight. And now we just gotta seat this back into the housing. And by doing that, you will see uh, a double line there, and then you see a single line. That single line has a little notch in there. So with the battery side of the circuit board, you're gonna seat that in there into the groove so that seats in there perfectly. And then you're just gonna drop this in, and then you apply pressure, just a little bit of pressure until it snaps on the other side. There, now it's in there. So we gotta put the back plate on. All we do is line that big notch with the big hole there. And we're just gonna line it up and snap it anywhere you want. It doesn't matter, it's gonna pop in. And that is all, I hope this helped you out. It is quick and easy. Thank you. The SOS button light should always be a solid steady blue light. You cannot turn it off. The SOS light will only flash if the alarm system was armed, then tripped by either one of the sensors or by pressing the SOS button on the alarm display or app. However, the SOS light will also flash to warn you if there's a problem such as a low battery warning or a poor connection to your Wi-Fi network. So if you see a red low battery warning on the alarm panel, this means that either a motion sensor or a contact sensor has low battery. Once you've replaced the battery, press the disarm button on the alarm system. The SOS light should stop flashing and the low battery zone warning should disappear. If you see the SOS light flashing without the red low battery warning, then the OSI alarm system may have a poor connection to your Wi-Fi network. This could either be from a power failure that may have caused an error with your Wi-Fi router, or it could possibly be compatibility issues between the Wi-Fi router and your OSI alarm system, which could cause it to intermittently disconnect. So let's check to see if it was due to a power failure. 
We'll power cycle the Wi-Fi router and then the OSI alarm display to see if it clears any errors. To power cycle the Wi-Fi router, unplug the Wi-Fi router, then wait 30 seconds and then plug it back in. This should now have fixed any connectivity errors. Now let's power cycle the alarm display. First thing you need to do is unplug the power from the electrical outlet. Then flip over the alarm display and remove the back panel. Now on the top left side of the USB mini port, you'll see a switch. This turns the backup battery on and off. Right now we want to switch it off. So move the backup battery to the off position. Then wait about one minute. Then turn the backup battery switch to the on position. Place the back panel cover back on. Then plug the power adapter back into the wall. Once powered back on, disarm the alarm system. The SOS button should now be a solid blue light. If the SOS light is still flashing after power cycling the Wi-Fi router and the OSI alarm display, then it might be due to an incompatibility issue between the Wi-Fi router and the OSI alarm panel. A way around this is to unbind the Wi-Fi connection on your OSI alarm panel and then reconnect it using the SoftApp Wi-Fi setting. Using SoftApp Wi-Fi creates an internal Wi-Fi hotspot which establishes a more solid connection to your Wi-Fi but requires a few more steps. To reconnect the OSI alarm panel using the SoftApp Wi-Fi setting, we first need to unbind the Wi-Fi. Unbind is another term for disconnecting the Wi-Fi. To do this, select Menu on the OSI alarm panel, then select Wi-Fi, then select Unbind. Now select the check mark to confirm. A 15 second countdown will appear in which by the end of the countdown, the alarm panel will now be disconnected from your Wi-Fi network. Now let's go to your smartphone or tablet and open the Smart Life app. Select the blue plus icon on the top right corner of the screen. Then select add device from the drop down menu. Select sensors. Then select alarm Wi-Fi. On this page, you need to select the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. If you have a booster or Wi-Fi extender, please select that network instead. Then enter your password. Then select Next. If this pop-up message appears saying your phone is connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi, just select Carry On. On this page, it asks you to confirm if the indicator is blinking. Typically, this is referring to when you're adding a smart product where a light appears on the product when in pairing mode. But with the OSI alarm panel, there is no indicator light when it's put in pairing mode. So what we need to do is go to your OSI alarm panel. You should already be in the Wi-Fi settings page when we last unbinded the Wi-Fi. If not, just navigate by pressing menu, then Wi-Fi. So on the Wi-Fi page, you want to select soft app configure. Then select the check mark to confirm. Once you do this, the OSI alarm panel will now be in pairing mode, meaning it's ready to connect to your Smart Life app on your phone or tablet. A countdown will appear in which you'll have 300 seconds to complete the remainder steps. Let's go back to the Smart Life app and confirm that the indicator is blinking, meaning that the OSI alarm panel is now in pairing mode. Select blink slowly. On this page, it's giving you a warning that when you select the blue button below, you'll need to look for either of these Wi-Fi networks labeled either Smart Life followed by a dash and four letters and numbers, or the letters SL followed by a dash with four letters and numbers. So let's select Go to Connect. You should now see the Smart Life Wi-Fi network pop up under the list of available networks. So let's select it. Select Connect only this time. Once you see it connected, we need to go out of this Wi-Fi screen and back to the Smart Life app. On Android, you do this by selecting the back arrow button on the bottom right of the screen. However, if you have an iPhone, you'll need to select the word Smart Life with the back arrow at the very top left of the screen. So because on this example I'm using an Android, I'm going to select the back arrow on the bottom right of the screen. Once you see this, you'll see the connecting device page where it's connecting and will take roughly between 30 seconds to 1 minute. Once you're taken to this page where it says one device added successfully, then it means that the OSI alarm system is now connected to the Wi-Fi using the soft app Wi-Fi feature. The flashing SOS light should no longer be flashing, letting you know that the OSI alarm display has a strong Wi-Fi connection. Well, we hope this video helped you out. All the products you see here are available on Amazon.com and Amazon.ca. If you have any questions, 
please don't hesitate to leave your question below and we'll be sure to answer it as soon as possible. My name is Brandon Paris and thank you for watching.